a very warm, warm welcome, everybody, uh, from, let's say, all over the world, right? So I see a lot of people from, uh, from the Netherlands are joining, but also a lot of people uh, from, uh, from abroad. So that's really good to see. Uh, today, I think we have a really hot topic uh, uh, to discuss. And uh, before we dive into details, some uh, small house rules to make things uh, as efficient and, uh, and progressible as, uh, as possible. So as Luke already mentioned, please feel free to go uh, along in the chat, uh, ask your questions. Uh, uh, I, th I think we want to keep things as interactive as, uh, as possible, right, Luke? So if you have any questions regarding uh, uh, Luke's surfing skills, that's also okay. But but I think regarding to the CMS, it's uh, it's even better to ask them today. Um, we will try to get all uh, all answers uh, answered on the table. Uh, but please also be aware after the uh, the webinar is uh, is arranged, we also get up a knowledge uh, a template or knowledge base in in, in place to have all uh, details uh, spread out on there. Um, so without further ado, I think I'd like to uh, introduce at least the, 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 the speaker of today. I think with over 10 years at HubSpot, he knows his way around uh, in the HubSpot CMS, um, has a background as, a, as an agency within marketing and user experience. And I think uh, the floor is all yours, uh, Luke. Take it away. All right. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Uh, I think I might need you to stop sharing and then I'll be able to jump on in. Yep, 100%. All right. And then we full screen. All right, beautiful. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say is I, uh, I love connecting with folks on LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, feel free to find me. That's probably the one I, I use the most LinkedIn and Instagram, but I uh, would love to connect there. Also, if you haven't already, I know a number of you have. Uh, opened up the chat already, as we mentioned. If you haven't already, open that up. I got my eye on it. I love how conversational it is. I um, I, I want to make this a dialogue. So I'll keep my eye on it. Um, if I miss any questions along the way, we are going to have some Q&A at the end. Um, and so we'll get to it there. Um, but speaking of questions, we're going to start off with a few, just so I could tailor the content and make sure that I'm talking about the most relevant things uh, during the presentation. Drop in the chat pane, what is the best way to describe your role at the company? That could be a job title. It could be some of the projects you work on. You know, again, it's just a way for me to better understand how to tailor um, the level and the types of content I speak about. So Paul says, inbound marketer, marketeer, we have owner. Ian says UX designer, love it. Online marketeer. Oh, here we go. Developer, marketeer, man marketing manager, specialist, online marketer, consultant. Okay. So a lot of marketing. It seems like we have a lot of either consultants or hands-on um, individual contributors, platform consultants, process and customer experience analysts. Okay. Love it. Thank you. My next question, there's only, there's two more. This is my second one. Um, how many pages are on your website? Tens, hundreds, or thousands? And again, this is going to gauge how, uh, this will help me understand for the websites you're working on. It could be the websites you're working on as well. It'll, uh, it'll help me gauge the size of them. And again, I might tailor the content I, I talk about. So drone says hundreds, 10 to 20, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. Okay, perfect. I'd be curious. I should have specified if this is blog content or if this is all because of blogs, you definitely can get into the hundreds, but I'll assume hundreds for the, for the site. Okay. Thank you. And my last one is when was your last redesign? When was the last time you invested in your number one asset to redesign? Was it days, weeks, or years, or maybe even decades ago? Who knows? Maybe if you're in manufacturing, it might have been decades ago. Three weeks ago. Okay, congrats on the launch. Uh, hopefully it went smooth. Uh, you can drop in some of your experiences. Angela says four years ago. Flora says currently doing a redesign. Um, good luck. I hope it's going smooth and I hope some of this helps. Uh, just ongoing. Oh, that's the best answer right there. You get like some virtual chocolate if I, if I could send you some chocolate. Uh, years one year currently redesigning last summer. Okay, a lot of people currently redesigning. So hopefully some of this is relevant. And if you have questions about your redesign, bring them up in the chat. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about over the next 25 minutes. I want to first just touch uh, and level set on why personalized website experiences matter. Why is it important for us to invest in them? 
Then I want to talk about um, how to make your website work for everyone. And this honestly is probably one of the things that gets me most excited and fired up about websites is just the possibility on how to leverage it across not only the entire customer journey, but across the entire business. And I think there's it's, it's an area that at least my background as I was working with clients at an agency and as I worked um, throughout HubSpot, you know, really didn't have my eyes open to. So I'm hoping to open your eyes to some new possibilities. And then, of course, for all of you can, um, marketeers, you probably want some hands-on tactics. I'm going to give you a few that you can walk away with today and hopefully will help you with your redesigns that you're working on now. So let's talk about why um, digital experiences matter. Well, these days, we all sort of expect uh, experiences on the web to be seamless and personalized. And that's really because companies like Amazon, Netflix, Uber, they've really set a new standard for what we expect in one-to-one -one experiences. And the reality is, is they've set that bar and now everyone expects that experience regardless of the type of company, mid-market, SMB, B2C, B2B, like your customers don't care. They've sort of gotten that habit of here's what a good experience is like and now they expect that from everyone. And now here's the beautiful part. When you build these world-class experiences, when you invest in crafting them, it's not only good for your end customer, it's also good for your company. McKinsey calls holy, uh, personalization the holy grail. And in a recent Harvard study, they cited that um, personalized experiences can reduce acquisition costs, increase revenue, and increase efficiency. Now, the good news is many companies like yourselves, you know, other folks, your peers, they're taking note. Um, and that can be good or bad news. The good news is there's other people that have this on their mind. The bad news is your competitors have this on their mind. So you don't want to, you want to make sure you keep up with these things. And so in a 2022 Forrester study, um, you know, companies cite that one of their number one ways that they want to improve their customer experience is thinking about online and digital experiences. I'm probably preaching to the choir with a lot of that as we have a lot of digital marketeers and that's why you're here today. But the reality is, is we have a lot of work to do. Forrester then surveyed the end customers to figure out how their experience was going. And the majority of them were like, it's all right, it's okay, it's fine. It's nothing I'm going to write home about. And, you know, although this could be depressing, I actually see this as extremely exciting because there's just a huge opportunity for us to invest in the customer experience online. And ultimately, if your competitors are on the left-hand side of the screen and the very poor, the poor, you know, again, it gives uh, your customers a, a, a value add to why they want to work with you versus other folks. All right, so now I want to shift and talk about how do we make the website work for everyone? Now, for the, for the dawn of time, and obviously Hub, HubSpot's probably helps contribute to some of this, uh, this is sort of how we thought about uh, the journey. And we've had this sort of very siloed, segmented approach. It's very linear. There's anonymous uh, to prospect and prospect to customer. And generally speaking, the marketing team own that. And then we kick it over to the sales team and they sort of own the prospect. They kind of own the prospect to customer. And then from customer to promoter, that's really owned by the service, uh, service team. Now, I'm going to go through three problems with this thinking. And I'm, if you don't take anything away from this webinar, just think about these problems because I think it'll help open up your eyes or at least it opened my eyes up on ways that we can better leverage the site. The first problem is just thinking about the marketing team only having control on bringing anonymous visitors to our site and turning them into prospects, right? We're really thinking only around that really you know, that funnel of bringing someone in the door. And the reality is what we see when we look at our, our best customers. And when I think about, I'm going to give you kind of along the way, some inside tips on, on how we think about it at HubSpot. At HubSpot, our marketing team is involved all the way across the entire funnel from anonymous prospect, prospect to customer, customer promoter. And so I think that's the first thing is just redefining the scope of how the marketing team can help and thinking about not just bringing folks in the door, but how do we engage those folks um, you know, as they onboard into your products, as they cross sell and, or as they use your products over time to keep them successful and retained and happy? How do you cross sell them into other um, products over time? And how do you build word of mouth and promoter and champion campaigns in order to help them become promoters? We have a number of um, you know, user groups, HubSpot fans, um, we call it, which is like our champions um, and, and affiliate. We have an affiliate marketing program. We have all kinds of stuff that is above and beyond just getting new folks in the door. All right. Now, the second problem 
is that companies very much think about the website as a tool to use only during this phase, during anonymous to prospect. That's really the purpose of the website is to, you know, get attract visitors through SEO and drive them from other channels to the website and then convert them to leads. And although this is absolutely critical, and this is probably a really good starting point, um, I think it's important for us to recognize that the website can be leveraged as a tool um, across the entire flywheel, not just the corporate Dot com site. And so when we look at some of our best customers, and when I think about some of the things that HubSpot has done, um, you know, they've really leveraged the website across the entire flywheel in many different ways. And so I'm going to give you a few examples of this. The first one is um, a directory or marketplace. Now, a directory marketplace, I have this added in the attract phase, but in reality, you can also do it in other um, places as well. You could use the directory marketplace in the uh, delight phase. For example, if you're trying to, if you're a software company and you're trying to um, increase your um, number of apps installed by your customers, that's a great way um, to start to engage them and help deliver even more value. We do that at HubSpot and that's really a um, an activation and retention play because we see folks who start to add integrations in, retain at a higher rate. Makes sense. They're using the platform better. Um, but I have it here in a track because we also at HubSpot use it as an acquisition, um, SEO, ac SEO acquisition tool. Um, you know, we have built a number of web properties that are directories that are user generated content, meaning that uh, individual users can submit to these directories, which adds content to them. And as you have content added to them, um, you have more pages that can be listed by Google, right? And so this is one example, inspired.hubspot.com. This is our showcase site of all, you know, all of the, not all the uh, sites, but of a number of sites built on CMS Hub. So if you're ever curious, you can go here to see. But again, in this example, it's really about generating SEO traffic. And so in the first year that we launched this, uh, we had 166 thousand um, organic visits in the first 12 months. And then we had a total traffic of uh, 38K over the first 12 months. So again, this over time, we've seen this steadily increase as basically a new engine to drive SEO acquisition. Um, so again, that's a great way to think about directories uh, within your um, user base. Another example I'll give you from my agency days is we created a directory of marketing events. And so we said, man, like I remember myself, I was searching all the time. I'm like, what events are coming up? What conferences? And I could never find a good list. And so I was like, I'm just going to build this. And I put it on, I built it on our site as a section on our site, like a little micro site. Um, and it was basically a directory of all the upcoming events. People could submit to it. Um, and we had a couple hundred events for the year. Uh, and it ended up getting about a hundred thousand um, visits uh, after about a year in. And so Again, directories can be a really great uh, opportunity for you to think about leveraging the website. All right, I'm going to go a little quicker on this because I only got a half hour, um, but we are recording. So I apologize for my non-English um, first speaking friends. Um, the second one is uh, launching a dedicated product or region site or even a channel site. You know, you may sell B2B or B2C. Um, and so two examples from our CMS customers and HubSpot customers is ClassPass and Calm. These are, um, Calm is a, one of the number one apps in the app store. They, they're like a meditation app. And then ClassPass is uh, a, an app where um, for, for gyms where folks can, can basically sign up for classes around different gyms. Now, their teams actually needed a dedicated site for the B2B side of their business. These are both B2C um, uh, both B2C companies, and they wanted to launch a B2B side where they would go to businesses and sell them um, you know, their employees. And so they ended up um, building microsites because their marketing team just couldn't really get access to the main corporate.com site. Um, that was controlled by the IT team and by the engineering team. And so they needed to be agile and, and be able to be autonomous. And they built these microsites. And you can see here that ClassPass, uh, they saw a 52% increase in their conversion rate just simply by um, building and launching this microsite. Next one, campaign or podcast site. And let me know too in the chat pane, if any of these sound familiar, if you've done this, if you've maybe experienced um, some of these types of microsites, um, I got my eyes on the chat pane. I want to hear your experiences through this as well. 
So the next one we see again in kind of in the track phase is the campaign or podcast microsites. Uh, here's a good example. Um, we know that podcasts are a really great way for not only thought leadership within an industry, but also lead generation and, and to build your subscriber list. And there is, um, you know, many times where you may want a non branded or a more um, distant from the brand type of site, especially if it's a thought leadership site, and especially if you're co-hosting the podcast with maybe a co-marketing partner. And so, um, you know, that's where you can start leveraging a dedicated microsite specifically for it. So this is for one of our customers, the growth series that they did with Accord Mortgages. They had over 20,000 downloads and they generated 8,000 new leads and they used the blog uh, tool to basically host all the podcasts and syndicate it. Um, you know, they worked with different industry leaders and ultimately, you know, became a thought leader in the space. Next way that you can leverage your website is running events. We're in a digital world. Um, you obviously signed up for this event. Um, and so whether you're just marketing the event through your site or you actually build the entire event platform on your site, um, these are all ways that, again, you can start to engage prospects and existing customers. And so here's an example from our friends at G2. Um, they used CMS Hub and Marketing Hub and HubSpot to build out their Reach 2020 events. Um, that's an annual event. It's a virtual event. They had a sign-in area. People could interact with all the um, speakers. They could um, host video content. Um, and so they had 57 hours of content, 3,000 registrations, 300 net new leads, and they attributed $5 million in revenue using the revenue attribution tool. So again, hopefully these things are just getting some of these uh, ideas on different ways you can leverage your website across the journey. I see Ian says, yes, we've created a few of these for multiple customers. Drives great uh, traffic. Appreciate it. Glad these make sense. Uh, Charles says, we've run live webinars, thought leadership uh, related to our industry. I love it. So again, the website, can you could start thinking about your website as a tool to drive traffic to those web uh, webinars, um, or it could be run the actual webinars on there, right? Embed, embed Zoom directly onto your site and have a, have a platform. All right, next one. Again, I'm going to go a little quicker on these. Learning management system. Um, learning management system is really interesting. You can use learning management systems in a number of different ways. Um, basically, you could think of this as an online academy. Um, at HubSpot, again, talking about sort of internally how we use some of these things, our um, academy let me know in the chat pane if you've ever taken one of our certifications. But our academy is a huge asset for us. And so that is a, originally it lived on our website. We've since rebuilt it in our product, but originally we built it on CMS Hub. And, um, you know, this was a great way not only to acquire a ton of new leads um, by building thought leadership and sort of methodology um, type of content. If you've ever taken our inbound marketing certification, that's free, that, that was in there. And so there's a set of certifications that we really use to attract folks and, um, you know, bring them into the HubSpot bubble. But we also use the content in there for onboarding new customers. Um, the content in there is leveraged um, uh, both on demand, but also with our onboarding teams to help onboard new customers. So you can leverage an LMS on your site as onboarding new customers. We also use it for training existing customers. And so it can also be a way to continue to engage your existing customers. So lots of ways you can start to think about online academies and leveraging that on your site. But um, again, I think the purpose here is just to think about the, the website as a tool to start um, building some of these experiences out. Uh, here's an example from one of our customers at Vush. They um, built, built a dedicated learning experience with 200 learners. They had 2,000 page views. They had 60 lessons. And in reality, this was a way for them to engage their uh, existing customers. And it worked really well for engaging them. The last ones I don't, I'm going to skip the examples on because I just for sake of time. But I, again, I just want to get the gears turning. Um, the first one is employee training and enablement sites. So you may want to leverage your site for internal purposes. At HubSpot, we have an entire intranet built for our sales team to help with enablement. It's an enablement center. And so they have all of their training and onboarding materials on there as we hire new reps. They have uh, access to um, enablement materials for each one of the hubs. Um, so you could start to explore using the website as not just an external customer facing, but a way to enable and train your reps, which ultimately, again, is is how your marketing team can influence it. And our marketing team owns that internal enablement site, by the way, our en enablement marketing team. Um, you can use it for customer custom portals. So folks can log in, um, they can onboard, they can interact, they can um, you know, check their latest invoices, they can hear announcements, 
Um, and so using building custom portals for existing customers is a great way, along with a partner relation management portal. Maybe you build out a portal specifically for your distributor network or your partner network. Now, the last one is, um, is uh, this is like some pro tips from HubSpot. We've actually invested in all of these where our career, our HR team, our investor, our relations team, and our legal team said, hey, we need a place on the site and we need to be autonomous to do things on the site on our own. Can you help? And our marketing team went out and they invested a lot in building a careers section. You can you see that hubspot.com slash careers um, on our website, specifically to build an inbound funnel for recruiting. That was a company-wide goal. The number one thing that can help HubSpot grow right now is, is hiring great people. And so being a company-wide goal, our marketing team rolled their sleeves up and helped build out a careers section for the site that now the HR team owns and controls. Same with the investor relations and same with the legal team. So again, the website is a tool for all of these. Um, let me know in the chat pane if you've, uh, anyone else, if you've used your website in any of these capacities. My goal here is really just to get the gears turning on these. All right, I gotta, I gotta go. We're we're really behind here, so we'll we'll try to. I might have to skip some sections, or we may have to cut in the Q and A. But um, hopefully, this is uh, connecting with you. The next one, is, the, the the last problem that I want to talk about is this is a complex journey. It's not as linear and as simple as we think. There are many touch points, and in all these touch points, it's an opportunity for you to lose a customer, or lose a potential prospect. And as we talk to customers, and you know, a lot of the reason why folks buy HubSpot is that they're running into a lot of technical problems in terms of making this journey smooth, making it easy. You know, they're really cobbl cobbling together a, a number of different solutions to try to make this um, effective. You know, let me know in the chat pane if this looks familiar, where you have sort of 25 to 50 plugins connected into your WordPress site, which is kind of connected into analytics. That's anonymous data. So you don't really know who any of those people are, but you can report on it. Connected maybe if you're lucky into your single source of truth for your customers, which is your CRM. And all of this is just disjointed. And so um, the first thing we see is that when you're operating in a system like this, it's really that siloed or incomplete data. And so I want this to sink in for everyone. It is impossible to build personalized website experiences if you do not have a centralized, unified source of all customer data, from reporting to your customer interactions, to the site visits, you know where they, they visit on their site. If you don't have a centralized, unified view of that, it is impossible to properly personalize and build those crafted experiences. Not to mention it's very inefficient and slow. If you're logging into all these different tools, lots of different interfaces, you know, you may report on something somewhere else and then you got to cobble together a spreadsheet to, to show your boss. Um, and so, you know, there are a lot of inefficiencies and when time is our number one resource, it's very easy for us to, to get sucked into managing the system and managing all of this. Um, and lastly, it's hard to prove your ROI. Um, you're on the hook to not only understand how to improve your um, strategy over time, but also you have to prove the ROI of your activities to your boss and so and to your CMO. And so that's really tough when you have all this disjointed data. Now at HubSpot, what we did is we looked at this journey and we pulled out and basically five key elements. We call them primary colors, content, messaging, automation, reporting, and data. These are the elements that are spread across that entire journey. And then what we did is we put, pulled those uh, elements together and crafted basically a world-class personalized um, experience platform. We have our CRM, which is our unified data source. Now, whether you're sales team is using HubSpot CRM or whether you're using another one like Salesforce, you can sync the data into our CRM and almost use it like a CDP, a customer data platform. Again, just creating a centralized source of truth. Um, and then from there, we have our marketing hub, which is our system of engagement, how you engage your customers and our CMS hub, which is our system of content, sort of how you build out those content experiences. All of those things working harmoniously in order to create a few things here. The first thing is it allows you to build those data, the data to build those personalized, sophisticated experiences. A couple of features I want to briefly highlight that enable that. Um, the first one, again, is our CRM, where you have this like really rich um, timeline view of your customer, of every interaction that from the first time that they visited your site to them becoming a promoter. And having that all in one place then allows you to bubble that up into the experience. And so we have another feature called smart content, which is a feature for you as a marketer to be able to change, dynamically change what is shown on the page from small things like CTAs and you know elements on the page to entire sections of a page um, around a segmented list, around geographic, around device type, 
around any information that you have in your CRM. So you can basically bubble that up into a segmented list and then bubble that up into dynamically changing the experience for that person on your site. Um, we also have a memberships functionality. So where you can log in, uh, create a login system. And the beauty of that is when someone's logged in, you now know exactly who that person is because they logged in. And that allows you to create some really personalized, tailored experiences behind the login system um, once you do. Um, next, you can leverage automation to make sure that it all works seamlessly, right? So you can leverage um, the things like workflows and marketing hub to make sure that um, folks are being nurtured and folks are being engaged in a, in a very um, automatic way. Um, and then the other thing that's important for us, again, speaking about time, is just being able to create better content by removing gatekeepers. Um, let me know if this sounds familiar. When I worked uh, with a lot of clients, they'd say a couple of things. They'd say, man, we used to have an in-house dev team, and anytime I wanted to make a change to the site, it had to go through our IT team, and it took forever. Or they'd say, hey, I was working with this old school agency, and anytime I had to make a change, I'd have to work through them, and they would take forever, and they co cost me an arm and a leg anytime I needed to just update a button color. Um, and so, uh, you know, ultimately at HubSpot, we believe that it's important to empower the marketing team to own the site. Now, that's not to say that developers and designers aren't important. They're absolutely critical, but they're there to serve the marketer and set them up for success, you know, build an experience for them. Um, to do their best work. And so the first thing that we do at HubSpot is we just say like, dude, we don't want you to messing around with plugin updates, security issues, hack sites. Like, let's just take care of all that stuff for you. And so we built a SaaS premium cloud hosted um, infrastructure where we just take care of all that annoying stuff so that you can free your time up to focus on creating content and building those world-class experiences. The other thing we did is we wanted to make it so darn easy for the marketer to own and update the site. And that goes from our flexible theme system, where you can change the look, the feels, the styles without ever touching code, to our drag and drop editing, where you can change sizes, layouts, add columns, add new modules from your module bin, um, and really own the site to make updates. You don't have to work through your developers every time. Um, now, again, developers are absolutely important. So we also want to make sure the experience is good for them and they're not limited. So we have a local... Um, a CLI web environment where they can use all the tools, the frameworks, GitHub, um, everything that they're comfortable with in order to build out those um, experiences that then the marketer can use inside the portal. The last few here is, again, it's important to be able to report on the ROI of, of what you're doing. And again, not only just so you can improve uh, the results you're getting, but so then you can turn around to your boss and talk about it uh, with them. And so we have um, a number of on-site SEO optimization features, basically to help indicate where is it the best place for you to spend your time and energy um, optimizing for SEO. We have uh, 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 reporting built into the system directly. And the beauty of our reporting, I think two things I want to call out. One, um, because it's built on the CRM, you have contact attribution reporting um, in CMS Hub, and you have revenue attribution in Marketing Hub Enterprise. And that allows you to tie back exactly how the website is contributing to leads and exactly how the website and your marketing efforts are contributing to revenue. And so you get a very clear view on the things that are working and not working and very easy to report on that. The other thing that I like about our reporting is because it's built on our CRM, it's not no longer anonymous. If someone is in your CRM as a contact, um, you now, when you look at who visited pages, um, when you think of who interacted with your site, you can now create lists off of that and say, hey, I want to, uh, anyone who visited this page in the last 24 hours, I want to send them a re-engagement email, or I want to personalize the site in a different way uh, the next time they come back. And so it's much more actionable than something like Google Analytics. Um, that's much more anonymous. You really don't know who any of those people are. And the last one here is adaptive testing. So we have adaptive and A-B testing, two different testing types that allow you to basically run experiments to improve your site over time. All right, and um, and the last one is, you know, again, because this is all in one system, it allows you to keep your messaging really consistent. You're not uploading a logo over here and uploading a second logo over here and trying to like copy and paste things. It's all just in one spot, right at your fingertips to keep things consistent. All right, so that's a little bit about the product. I do want to say, um, you know, we've seen some great success um, from customers doing this. Honestly, it's our number one cohort in terms of customer MPS, folks who use Marketing Hub and CMS Hub and the CRM together. But in addition to that, um, so not only are they happiness, they're also generating the most web traffic. We saw double di or triple digit improvements from customers using uh, the combo together. We also saw 
uh, a huge, massive increase on leads. And so this is just really clear that if your goal is leads and your goal is visitors to the site, the folks using these things together are really doing it effectively. So that's just some, some data to back up some of these uh, claims. These are some of the household names that are using CMS Hub and Marketing Hub together. And I think Joelle really put it together. This might resonate a little bit. She says, we built a Franken system monster on WordPress, having reporting, marketing automation, CRM, and website all on the same platform provides us with a single or with insights that we would have never been able or have been much more difficult to achieve if we tied together desperate tools. All right. In the remaining uh, three minutes, I want to give you some tactics and next steps. Then we're going to get into Q&A. Um, and uh, so get your questions ready. You can drop them in the chat pane now or get them ready for when we get in there. Some tactics to go with. Now, speaking about, again, uh, expanding the impact of your website, the first thing I would do is invest um, some time with your department leaders. Um, so get a one-on-one -on -one 30 minutes with your department leaders and ask them three questions. What are your goals for the year? What are you trying to achieve, right? Is it increased revenue? Is it cross-sell? Is it activation? Is it um, improve onboarding? Uh, maybe it's um, ramping sales reps and productivity of sales reps. Um, and so understand what are their department goals and then the second thing you could say is, okay, now that I understand your goals, what are the big initiatives that you have planned this year to help you make progress towards those goals? And they'll talk about, hey, we're running this event. We want to launch. We want to better enable our reps. So we're doing X, Y, and Z trainings. And, um, you know, they're going to give you a, a, a view. You know, we want to increase uh, hiring and uh, careers. So we're thinking about, you know, uh, investing in uh, recruiting They'll give you some examples that you can then follow up with. How might the marketing team and the website support those efforts, right? And so now you can start to see where the website can start impacting all these other departments. Um, and, and again, not only can you continue to generate leads through the website, but now you can start expanding the impact of the website and your influence as a marketing team and the impact you're making as a marketing team to the overall business. All right, second thing is it's important to understand how your current website experience is doing and the current experience, you know, customer journey is doing. Now, this is a whole webinar and a half or three um, in it of itself, but luckily we have a free certification in the HubSpot Academy. So if any of this is interesting, especially for those of you who are going through redesign now or planning on doing a redesign, I would highly recommend, now I'm biased because I, I put this together, but check out the Growth Driven Design Certification in the HubSpot Academy. Now, specifically for this, um, auditing your experience, there is a strategy lesson. And that strategy lesson goes through all of the UX um, research and uh, UX principles from jobs to be done to uh, from customer interviews to jobs to be done to journey mapping um, to reviewing your analytic data. And so that's really the deep dive when you want to get into auditing the current experience. You can go to that bit.ly to access it. Um, but one of the things that you want to really highlight, one of the deliverables coming out of that research is to put together a customer experience map. And this will allow you to start to see um, the stages of the journey that someone goes in, the friction points that they run into, and the opportunities you have for focusing your time and energy to improve those rough edges. Um, if you go to that bit.ly, that's a link on our Growth Driven Design website. Um, we go a little bit more into depth into... Uh, journey mapping. And we also have some templates that you can use. So if you're like, Luke, I need a template. What does this look like? How do I get started? Go to that bit.ly and check it out. Now, here's my pro tip. The number one thing I can recommend to everyone on this call, if you, got, if you don't take away anything from this, this is your one homework assignment. Find out, this, this goes into job just to be done research. Jobs to be done is a framework that basically helps you understand what people are trying to accomplish, what friction they're running into, and why do they switch to a competitor or switch to your your solution. Um, and that switching moment is really, really interesting for us as marketers, because our goal is really to get more people to make that switch or prevent people from making the switch, make them happy, make them stick around. So in your journey map, identify some really key switching moments from a new customer. So find folks who recently switched to your product or service in the last 30 days. People leaving your product or service, people who churned, find 10 people who recently churned um, in the last 30 days. If you can't get that data, then think about people, if you have like an at-risk scoring, like at HubSpot, we have uh, an at-risk score based off of product usage. Um, and basically those are people that we we sort of flag as like, hey, let's check in with them. You know, you can use at-risk folks as well, but use those, um, that cohorts um, to you know, the people who switched in the last 30 days and, and interview them. 
Then anyone who's recently cross-sold, so maybe they expanded their services, find out why they cross-sold, why they expanded, or upsell if they've um, increased and went up a tier or um, purchased a bigger package. These are all switching moments that you as a marketer need to have a deep understanding on. And you can run these um, interviews with them to understand the scenario, the pains, the anxieties, what caused them to switch and how the switch has been going. All of that is gold, absolute gold for how to improve the experience. Um, interviews take a lot of time, but if there's one thing that I can recommend, you know, it's get out of the analytics tools to start, start with the interviews. Cause that's where the gold is. And the interviews are going to inform how you go into your quantitative research. So highly, highly, highly recommend that. And again, there's a, in that same section of the site that, um, of, of, uh, growth, 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 growth driven design website, there's a interview template for running customer interviews. So you can basically use that and modify it. Um, again, we also have it in the certification. All right, last couple here. Um, audit your existing customer data and technology. Where does your customer data live? Is it disjointed? Is it all pulled together? Do we need to create some integrations to pull it together? Um, and what tech are we using to power that uh, experience and where are there opportunities to improve? Um, the other thing is to get a better understanding of how the website's performing. You can install a tool called Hotjar. Um, it's a um, heat mapping, user recordings, basically behavioral insights tool to see how people are interacting in your site. So you can configure, they have a free version. They also have paid versions. You can set up a heat map on your homepage, um, user recordings to see how people are interacting on the site, and then include a one cent, uh, a one slide up question. Um, I like to do this on abandon, basically like when people are leaving and I ask what brought you here today. And that allows you to basically understand what what are they looking for? And the fact that they're leaving the site indicates that you're you're not providing that information properly for them. Um, and so it gives you some good insights on how to A-B test, like what to A-B test on the site. Um, and lastly, see how your website, you know, base vitals are performing. Um, you can go to websitegrader.com. This is a free audit tool that we've created here at HubSpot. Um, and that basically will uh, give you a free report on, how, you know, the good things, the bad things, where to improve. And once you've done that uh, report, you can always meet with webs to go through it um, or even have them run it for you um, to see their opinion. They're consulting on how to improve your site um, based off of the results that they have. And my last one, if HubSpot sounds interesting at all, I know some of you are HubSpot customers, so thank you. Some of you are not. Um, we Last week, uh, June 15th, we've we launched a free version of our CMS. And so if you're like, I got to test this thing out. I want to kick the tires a little bit. What is this CMS thing all about? Um, you can go to a, um, that bit.ly link or just go to hubsot.com into our products and start the CMS account for free. Um, we also have uh, hundreds of themes in our marketplace built by developers. So you can pick out a theme that you really like and install that in. There's a, a ton of free themes and just try it out. See what the editing experience is like. You could build a personal site. I know a lot of people are working on their personal brands, have a personal blog or podcast, um, or you may have a micro site uh, for your, your company you just want to build out, but um, or you just kick around the tires. But I just say that because it'll give you an idea of what uh, at least the HubSpot technology looks like in, in our CMS. All right, that's what I got. I know we ran a little long. I'm also happy to stay a little longer if anyone else wants to or if we're able to, but um, we do have, I think, a little time for questions. So drop those questions in the chat pane and we'll start um, going through them. Um, as yeah, maybe up. maybe when people are writing in chat, uh, Luke, I'm also very, uh, very curious on, on what maybe are the most common mistakes when people choose a, a certain CMS. I mean, the first thing is just already going into the process um, with a, a CMS cho already chosen. Um, I think one of the things, you know, because it's what they used in the past or it's like their, you know, their developers are banging at the window that they want. You know, developers are very opinionated. I love yeah. developers, but they, they love what they love. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for the use case. And so um, the way I always evaluated it as I work with clients at the agency is I always just started with the goals. Like, what's the purpose of your website? What are you trying to achieve? And how is the website a lever um, or a tool to get to those goals? Then I back into, okay, what's the required functionality on a site that we're going to need to get to those goals? What sections, what interactions, what customer experiences, portals, that sort of thing do we need? And then back your way into evaluating the tech. What's the best tech that's going to support that? And so, you know, for us at HubSpot, we've really focused around the marketer. 
So we want to build for marketers. We're not a developer's CMS like Gatsby or Nellify or Contentful. Um, we're not a, de a designer's CMS like Webflow. We really focus on empowering the marketer and we really empower businesses. Like if, you're bu if your website's there to generate leads and revenue and it's for you growing your business, that's where we try to, that's our sweet spot. Um, but again, go through that process um, because again, it's easy to, to get segmented. The second thing I'll say is again, just not investing the time or the research to think about the integrations that are required. Um, and that's really just to get your data uh, in order. I think it's easy to say like, nah, whatever, like that's a lot of time and energy to integrate and pull data together. But again, you're limiting yourself in your reporting, in your customer experience when you don't have that. So you typically I'll see such disjointed systems on any system just simply because they didn't invest the time and energy or put the importance of, of really building those like rich, well-done integrations. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And as you mentioned, right, if you don't know the business impact, it will also be very hard to convince sometimes the management who also needs to yeah. uh, be convinced on getting uh, the right uh, things in place, so to say. Um, totally. I mean, that's where it should start. It should start with a conversation of management. Use those questions we talked about. Like, what are your, our goals for the year? If you're in the marketing org, you should know the marketing org's goals. You know, like, what are the big initiatives? How does the website help? And then you got a clear thread going from the thing that your, your boss cares about and your leaders care about, which is the overall goal for the department, and a clear thread to how the website's going to contribute. Yeah, 100%. See, Dylan uh, has a question there, Luke. Sure. He says, how does HubSpot let HubSpot CMS communicate to other internal web apps and create a full DXP? This is already possible, the current CMS configuration, because I read that it's almost impossible to create the CMS as a headless in the current setup. Okay, great question, Dylan. So one of the first things um, for anyone who's reviewed the CMS in the past is put all that to, si to the side and review CMS again. Um, our CMS has, we have a ton of product folks. I think we have 150 people um, just on the product team, just working on CMS. So think about that. That's a big team uh, evolving it very quickly. And so it's changing fast. Um, we relaunched it in April, 2020. And since then we've made a number of improvements. And so the first thing I would say is, um, uh, and I'll address headless in just a second. The first thing I'll say is that, um, you know, we've built our uh, CMS on top of the CRM, and we have a number of APIs available. You can go to developers.hubsock.com to review all the APIs that are available um, to really open the system up. And so I think that's probably the first thing is um, take a look at that. Um, the second thing is um, I'll, I'll just highlight some of those APIs or the things to take note on and how to connect them. The first one is we recently launched something called a media bridge. And the media bridge basically allows you to connect into any uh, external asset repository. So like a DAM, a digital asset manager, a Wistia, a, a Dropbox, whatever that repository is, and pull those files directly into the UI of HubSpot. So if you decide like, hey, we need a more robust DAM in order to like manage all of our assets, the file manager that's in HubSpot just doesn't cut it. Um, you know, you can, or we already are on a platform, we're not going to switch. Um, you can use that media bridge to connect to it. And then directly in the, in the marketer experience, they're going to see all those damn assets they can access. They don't have to like go over to one system and copy and paste it over. The other thing that we're working on in our public roadmap, which you can see our public roadmap on hubstuff.com slash new, um, that's all of the hubs, but on the CMS hub one is we're actually working on building our own legit, um, digital asset management system. And so we're going to have a fully functioning, robust, um, enterprise grade um, digital asset management system that the team's actively working on. Um, the second thing that I'll say that I want to call out on the headless side of things is that um, I think that's a little bit of a misconception and that's really on our part because we don't go to market screaming from the hills that we're a headless CMS, um, but the product has advanced in a number of different ways. Um, one is the, the fact that our CRM, again, can be used as a data source. And so we're leaning into the concept of CRM powered content where you can create um, custom objects, you can create your data structures within the CRM. You can add, for example, a custom object for a realty site where you add in all your realty listings. You have another custom object for your realtors and you can start basically scaffolding out all the content within the CRM. And then you can use that and pull that into the front end of CMS hub to increase to, to the experience, but you can also use our APIs to pull that content out into a mobile app, into other experiences, right? So that's really like the headless. I would say that we support 
uh, the vast majority of headless use cases. Um, that's usually my first question because headless is such a broad term. I say like, explain to me, help me understand the specific use cases on how you'd like to pull the 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 uh, data from HubSpot and render it. And usually, you know, eighty percent of the time, we check the box in terms of being able to do that. The other tool that folks use, the other repository that we have that is leveraged in the CMS is called HubDB, and that's a lighter weight almost. Um, you can think of it like an air table or a spreadsheet on steroids where you can basically store data within these tables and then pull that into the um, the front end experience. And again, there's HubDB APIs where if you have data stored in there, like a location finder where you have all your location in rows of a table, you can pull that out and um, render that in other places outside of just the, the front end. Um, and then the last thing I'll say on headless, just for any of our techie folks in here, one thing that's now in public beta is uh, we recently uh, released uh, GraphQL support. And so um, that basically for any non-technical folks that basically GraphQL is a, a, a language that developers love that allow you to basically pull data from data sources and render them. And so that GraphQL opens up a ton of uh, doors, not only for headless scenarios outside of HubSpot, um, but also within the CMS itself. So that's something in public data as well. Dylan, I could probably talk about DXP all day. Um, it's a topic we're thinking a lot about, um, and there's obviously other facets to DXP. Um, but uh, for sake of time, maybe we'll we'll jump on to the next one. Um, or if you have any specifics, Dylan, drop drop it in. Um, I'd I'd love to I'd love to hear a little bit more. All right, what other questions do we have? I do not more. see any questions in the chat uh, anymore, uh, Luke. So uh, I think also the information you you share was quite uh, quite extensive. So so, so really well, uh, really well on that one. Um, and I th think if people have additional questions, they're more than happy to reach out to both you and me. I think, uh, Luke. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you can reach me at any time. It's just Luke at hubstart.com. It's easy to find. Yeah, and you're even available at six in the morning uh, in your end, right? <laughs> anytime, anytime for my HubSpot friends. I, I see Ian has a question uh, popping in, so that's good. Okay. In your experience, looking at scale of websites, how many website pages are sufficient for a large corporate website, including blogs? I saw I mentioned that 3,000 pages in the chat before. Um, how do you define core size? Um, so... I think the first question to deconstruct this a little bit, you say, how would website, like how many website pages would be sufficient for a larger corporate site? Um, as many as it takes to get to your goal. Um, so I think that's the first thing is it's not so much about just blasting content out there. It's about, you know, going back to your goals and then being really smart and strategic about the types of pages and types of content or sections on your site that will contribute to that. And so I don't have like a magic number. I know at HubSpot, one of the things that we've been doing, and there's some blog content we've written publicly about this, is we've really spent the time of going through all of our content. Because as you can imagine, we have like thousands and thousands of blogs and content um, throughout the ages, uh, the last 16 years that we've been in existence. And we've really been consolidating. We've been cutting down. We actually found that when you have too much content, it puts a real stress in Google's crawling system. And so it doesn't necessarily crawl all of your content or does it in an inefficient way. And so we've sort of taken the stance over the last few years that it's quality over quantity. And we found ways to like remove content that just isn't performing. I think we kill, I think we ended up retiring or sunsetting like 500 blogs or a thousand blogs or something like that. And it actually increased our SEO traffic. Um, there's a public blog that's written about this. So you can, you can Google that if you want to learn more um, along with consolidating the page content that we have. So I think that's one. The second thing that we do is, you know, again, we we're our SEO team is real strategic about finding opportunities within search rankings where we could rank well, and we're not today. Like we might not be ranking for a particular term. And so, you know, they have a, a whole strategy on creating specific pillar pages around that um, type of content and getting that to rank. And so again, just being smart and strategic about the types of content. And, um, you know, again, blogs, blog, I kind of see as, as I mean, it's part of your website for sure. Um, but I guess just the way I try to compartmentalize things, I see it as a accelerant to your website. It's a section of your website to try to attract new folks in the door, or maybe if it's a customer blog, it's like a, it's a retention or an, a, a re-engagement type of a thing. Um, but it's really a section of your site and you may have other sections as well. So 
I don't know if that totally answered your question, but I guess um, the way that I would think about it is just start with what are your goals and be very intentional about the content and think quality over quantity. Um, and then uh, also just like, are you, is the content that you create actually delivering the promise and the value to the person visiting the site? And that's where that little hot jar question comes up. Like what brought you here today? Another one that I like is like, did you find what you're looking for? And if you start seeing, you can also do like little happy faces. And if you see too many sad faces on a piece of content, like, I think that's where it's like more about investing and improving that kind of stuff versus just pumping a ton of new content out without ever seeing how it performs once it's out the door. Um, great, a great, great input. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, nice one, Luke. I think also regarding uh, the time, I think it's good to uh, to to wrap up. Um, thanks a lot for your uh, information, Luke, today. Thanks for sharing your knowledge, and also thanks for all the viewers uh, to uh, to have them here. And also, I think for the people who will watch recording afterwards, also yeah. uh, more than happy to join us next time uh, uh, in real life. Um, we will share the information afterwards, so uh, everything will be shared. Please feel free to link LinkedIn with Luke and myself, and uh, have a wonderful uh, Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thanks. Bye bye.